London. This is John Simmett. He used to be Dipsy in the Teletubbies, and he's one of Birmingham's top comedians. A few years ago, we had the favourite Dwayne Chambers for the men's 100 metres for the gold medal, representing the UK. And Dwayne, the favourite, ran taking drugs. And running on drugs, Dwayne, the favourite, came in fifth. Which makes you wonder what type of drugs the fool was taking. I'm recording him so that I can help make his humour available round the globe and at the same time prove how easy it is to make your own podcast. Podcasts are the internet's own form of radio. They've been around for barely a year and they're simply an audio file with a web address. So unlike conventional radio, you aren't tied to listening at a particular time. You can download the file and listen to it where and when you want. My name's Adam Curry. Typically between 10 and 20 megabytes, the files are easily transferred to your computer, burnt onto CD or loaded onto your portable music player, hence the pod in podcast. You can even subscribe to regular shows that interest you. They're downloaded automatically to your computer when new editions appear. But best of all, because it's internet-based, there's nobody stopping you making your own podcasts. There's no need to convince some radio executive you've got something to say. There's no need to satisfy the demands of a broadcasting regulator. You're free to talk to the world. I'm worrying about what's going to happen about Michael Jackson. I do have to say, a master stroke by his legal team, one of the character witnesses they were going to call to tell you what he saw in Michael's life. They had Stevie Wonder. Mr. Wonder, take the stand. Stevie! What did you see? Absolutely nothing. Case dismissed. Thousands of people have already made their own podcasts. Now, originally, it was a pretty geeky thing to do, hence the large number that are on technology subjects. Here's a brilliant one I can thoroughly recommend. The MacCast. For Mac geeks, by Mac geeks. But now the big players are getting in on the act. The latest edition of Apple's iTunes has a special podcast section with a chart of the most downloaded shows, and they're all free. And the BBC's podcasts are a big hit, with thousands downloading everything from the Today programme to Chris Boyles. But in spite of the big guns getting involved, this is still, above all, do-it-yourself radio. So how do you do it? Well, to start with, you need to record your sound. Virtually all computers can be turned into sound recorders, and there's an excellent bit of free recording software available called Audacity. Plug a microphone into the socket, and away you go. You can uh, press play, pause, and record, just as if you were using a conventional tape recorder. And there's a constant visual monitoring of the sound, so you can see what you're recording with these mesmerizing squiggly lines. I'm recording in high-quality, uncompressed stereo. And by the end of the session, I had 45 minutes, or 500 megabytes, of material. But don't worry if you want to record sound on location and you don't have a laptop. There are some excellent pocket-sized digital sound recorders available. This Maycom comes with a separate microphone pre-amplifier, all for around 200 quid. Plug in a decent microphone and you get impressive sound quality. My recording complete, I can now use the same free program, Audacity, to edit down my 45 minutes of material. There's a nice run through quite a section of jokes here, so I can select that and cut and paste just like you would in a word processing program. In the first stage, she's looking for a relationship, we're looking for sex. Let's cut that piece out, open a new track and paste it in. The second stage, we've moved on a bit, she's looking for commitment, we're looking for sex. And the same with this view here. And then most people end up in the third and final stage, which is that we're looking for the remote control and a good night's sleep. <laughs> and she's looking for sex. Also, I could add lots of effects if I wanted to. I could, um, I could change the pitch. I could uh, add music. But actually, I think I'll keep mine fairly simple. And of course, if the sex is no good, her friends know all about it. So I select the uh, various tracks with my files on and export them as a rough mix. They say a rough mix, but it actually sounds quite good. Leopard print underwear, your handcuffs, you're jumping from the wardrobe just as Tarzan and all that sort of stuff. Though obviously at the moment, the files are still in their full original quality and they'll need to be compressed into a format like MP3 for ease of downloading. A little tip and so on, you know, get her to sign a, a pre-sexual contract as opposed to pre-nuptial. Hmm. Sounds good. 
Now I need to put my podcast somewhere people can find it. I could submit it to iTunes for publishing. I could link to it from a blog, but I've decided to use the website that I created last series. Bear in mind, though, that if your podcast becomes popular, you'll need to find somewhere that can cope with the demand of all those people downloading it. She'll probably break it, but at least that way you can sue her ass afterwards and make a few pounds out of your ritual humiliation, you know? <laughs> Media experts reckon that in a few years' time, there'll be 80 million people around the world regularly listening to podcasts. So if you want to make your mark in this exciting new medium, now's the time to do it.